everyone. Hi. Happy to be here. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Um, this is great. I'm glad you're awesome. here. We I'm have glad to. We have a lot of people in our chat already, and let's get started, right? I see. Very exciting. Hi, everybody. Um, Lauren, where did you grow up? Well, okay, so I grew up in Texas, but I was born in Las Vegas. So that's kind of interesting. I grew up in Texas in the 90s, and I'm a very, like, political person. Um, and so the po politics in Texas very much influenced my personality, I think. Um, How and so? Then, well, um, Ann Richards was our governor. So she, this, first of all, in Texas was a woman and also a Democrat. And then my mayor, I lived in San Antonio, so he was a first-generation Mexican man. I also, um, and then what else? What else? I mean, and but Texas is kind of just like a Republican state, and I lived in a military town. San Antonio at that point had five military bases. So there was this very conservative but semi-liberal uh, way of life, and I felt like I had a really comfortable upbringing my grandmother was also on the city council in the city that she lived in so there was and, politics poli politics amongst other thing in, things in your family there's a lot of entrepreneurship yeah. in your family and we're going to get to that next yeah that's cool too um and then when did you come to new york then i came to new york in uh 2007 so i've been here for yeah, yeah, it was a good year for New York. I came um, because I was a I was a makeup artist and I had been working in TV and film. It had taken me all over the country. I'd worked in Vegas. I'd worked in New Orleans uh, when they had this huge tax incentive that brought a lot of film. So if you watch right. for se several years, lots and lots of movies were being made in New Orleans. So like Benjamin Buttons was made there and then like... Um, the Walking Dead was shot there. Like, everything was shooting there. So I shot two shows for Disney. And the director was like, you're amazing. You definitely need to work in New York. And I was like, well, if I'm amazing and I need to work in New York, then I guess I'm going to go. So I did. Well, question, question for you, though. Here. Question for you, though, Lauren. How, let's, let's, um, let's take it back a little bit. How did you get into television? That's really interesting that your first foray into makeup led you right into television. How did that well, happen exactly? You know, maybe it didn't because I worked, like most makeup artists, worked at the makeup counter. And I worked for MAC for many years. I was in college in Austin and I wanted to be a makeup artist. So I went uh, to apply at MAC and I had this skill set that allowed me to do that. And I was a great makeup artist. And a full circle moment, I ended up being promoted and moved to Las Vegas. So basically back to the place where I was born. And I worked at at um at the Mac in the Caesars forum oh, shop. That's like my I love it's a, it's shopping in Las Vegas. Well, yeah. It, it's a, it's makeup fantasy land. It's open it's from a eight AM. Fantasy land. Yeah. It, it and, is. and I love shopping for anything in Vegas. Makeup, shoes and everything season. everything yeah um and so well but the thing about vegas is that every bit of makeup can be used because you're doing makeup on showgirls and you're doing makeup on hookers you're doing makeup on i should we, sex workers um <laughs> but let's be honest there's a lot right there's a lot yeah know, vegas is the like clientele a spans this spectrum is what that you're saying. spans the spectrum. That's a better way to and, put it. And you know, Las, doing Vegas, it for... Las Vegas spans the spectrum, right? There's all sorts. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, every, spans the spectrum. I'll say that because I don't want to get attacked for, like, saying the, the wrong thing and, and not meaning to say the wrong thing. But, uh, yeah, like, even, you know, moms on vacation. Bachelorette's, like, everybody needs their makeup done. Wow. So. That must, so how long were you doing that in Las Vegas? I was in Vegas for two years. And that's when I transitioned into makeup. The thing about Vegas, too, is it's a party town. And so I had my experience in a party town because I'd come from Austin to Vegas. Um, and uh, you needed to have sort of a work ethic because production still happens during the hours where people are working. And so I was the person who could have a good time but not get totally sloshed and then uh, get up and go to work. And because I was at work, I was on time, and I was good at my job, it opened so many doors for me um, in Vegas. That's that was interesting. That's such a good point about 
you know, where you came from in your career. And it's true. It's sort of like working as a makeup artist. You have, you know, what people, what some people may not realize is that you have a schedule to keep. And oftentimes yeah. you have to show up for your job very early in the morning or you have to be with somebody, somebody very late at night. And so to be able to balance both is huge. Are you still um, freelancing as a makeup artist or are you just doing the collection? I am working on the brand right now. Definitely makeup is makeup is on hold as far as the beauty industry, the TV it, it really industry is. goes. Yeah. Um, you know, productions have all stopped and it's, it's a kind of a dangerous time as far as makeup goes. Um, or we're in uncharted territories. I think, you know, if you're a photographer or a wardrobe stylist, you can throw your mask on. But when you are a makeup artist, you are literally face to face with someone and until we figure out how that uh, how that works and how COVID and uh, you know viruses are transmitted, and then we have some time. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Uh, yeah. But you'll go back to it, is what you're saying. You know, I don't know. The, my brand has been it's been growing, and and I'm very fortunate because in this time, a lot of people are suffering. And Lauren, if your beauty continues to do well. Um, so anyone who's watching, who's shopping the brand and thank you, uh, anybody who's new to the page, thank you. Um, but makeup is fun and it's always, there's an opportunity to be creative. Uh, and so if there's an opportunity to do both, then potentially I will, Fabulous. Uh, but uh, it's, a, let, it's, a, it's a lot to juggle. Let's it's go a lot back responsibility. To, to what, what was your very first job as a celebrity makeup artist? Can you remember what that was? Like that first gig? Lauren, the, the first gig as like I've, doing that type of makeup on um, uh, high profile makeup in the world of, of entertainment or celebrity or I'm awful at this because let me tell you what I remember the most about. Well, that's be even better. Tell me what you yeah. remember the most. That's better. The, what I remember the most is w always wanting to be a makeup artist and going to set. And when you go to set in the morning, the lights are up. And it's exactly what you see in the movies. People are buzzing around. Everybody's walking. There's cords and lights hanging from the ceiling. And there's director's chairs. And they're collapsed, you know, folded up. And I remember walking out with my kit and standing there like, oh, my God, I'm here. I wanted to be a makeup artist on TV. And here I am. And I, I when I say it and I tell the story, it's like, you guys aren't in front of me, but what I saw that day is so embedded in my heart and my mind and my brain because I worked really hard to get there and I, and I got there. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's magical if you cannot get jaded by all of the insanity and, and wild things that happen behind set and behind camera, behind the scenes. It is magical. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, really um, Agreed, agreed. Describe though, so you've worked on shows like Saturday Night Live, right? Um, yep. Describe how being a makeup artist on a show like Saturday Night Live is different. Um, describe being part of a crew and how you work there. So when you are working on a film or a, just a TV show or some episodic show, everything is scripted um, and you're sitting quietly making sure that there's no sound and it's quiet and you do take after take after take and you're just kind of sitting off to the side watching the show but when you work at a place like Saturday Night Live or Late Night with Jimmy Fallon or something like that there is an energy and there is a pace because the show really is live so when they say live from New York there's actually someone saying that right then and there in that second and there's a hundred people buzzing around backstage and so the pace of that show is fast. You're changing clothes, you're working with the wardrobe and the hair, you're taking off wigs and applying makeup um, all at the same time. And so there is so much excitement and so much self-responsibility, but it's a place that demands that you have fun. And that's the complete difference between anywhere wow. else that I've ever worked. I and I, I loved working there because it, they, you're, you just have fun. You're surrounded by people who just want to make you laugh. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think, you know, yeah, being on set, there's definitely that kind of energy and that vibe, but being on a set like that, I can only imagine. Yeah, one of the coolest places I've how ever fun, worked. How fun that would be. 
Entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurship, we touched on this a little earlier, is in your blood and your great grandparents were entrepreneurs of all kinds, really. Um, what will you tell us what each of them did exactly? Because it's yeah, so interesting. It's really cool. My, my um, grandmother's mother and father on my mother's side owned a steakhouse. And um, where was the steakhouse, Lauren? Okay, now this is really cool. It was I in want, Texas. Like, the whole story of the, the, the whole vibe. Thing. The vibe. So if, if you can imagine, I don't know how many people have seen the color purple, but um, it was, it, well, the color purple set in the 20s, whereas That's my like one of my favorite movies. I can't watch it. it. It, like, makes me, it takes me down. It, like, it does take you down, but there is, uh, there's also this, this spirit amongst the, the, this community of people, um, and they, it's tumultuous, and there's love, and there's hate. It's and beautiful. Destruction, but there, right, but there is, there is, uh, it's just like heartwarming. And for me, it's just part of my culture. So I just feel it. But this was the 60s. Just imagine the late 60s, early 60s. My great, my great grandparents owned a steakhouse. And it was in the segregated like Jim Crow South. And so when big acts would come through, maybe let's say between Austin and San Antonio, where they were traveling through Texas and they couldn't go to a restaurant or a hotel, they would come and they would get dinner or party at like the after party was at my great grandparents steakhouse, which is now actually a, um, it's actually a, a city monument in the small town that it's in. It's incredible. But like BB King and Tina Turner, I can Tina, um, yeah. just all of the old sixties music, they would come through Who and they were would, coming through performing, yeah. traveling the country. Traveling and this the was country. a place for them. Wow. Yep, on tour in Cadillacs, and they'd pull up, and they'd have dinner, and, you know, they'd get well-fed, and they'd party with the locals, and then they'd go to their next town. So that's what my um, my great-grandparents on my mother's side did, and then my great-grandparents on my father's side, um, they actually owned a funeral home, which is one of the, I think, staple businesses in the community because, of course, at that time, black people who died or who, who passed away were not allowed to, they were also segregated in death, let's say that. And so uh, there always had to be a black mortuary in these communities to take in the black people who, who passed away. So my, my great grandfather owned a convalescent and funeral home. Was that a conscious choice for him? I'm going to do this thing that, you know, is a noble thing. Well, not quite noble. It, it was a, it was a need. It was a necessity, but was it, con you know, I, we were, I just had a conversation with somebody else recently sort of reminding me of, yeah, what was the thought behind that? Do you know any, I was going to ask you if there were any, yeah. one of my next questions were, were, can you recall any stories that you were told about any of your, you know, you know, your family and their businesses? Do you know if that was like a conscious effort on his part? I'm going to do Not this thing. I don't know on his part if it was yeah. a conscious effort and also, I mean, he passed away before I really got the entrepreneurship right. bug. He, I was very, right. I was very young when, when my great grandfather passed away. It was a very beautiful, handsome, lovely, just, just one of the most uh, charming and sweet, soft-spoken men that you would ever meet and know. Um, and I do remember that about him. But um, I don't have the answer to that question. And, I, you know, it's a small town, and I think it probably takes a lot of effort. Um, the family home, the, the funeral home is actually still in my family. Um, the restaurant is not, though. The restaurant is no longer. Yeah. It is not. Um, but it is a historical landmark in the small town that my, my great-grandparents and grandparents um, and my mother, where my mother was actually born. What a legacy. Wow. It's a pretty cool legacy. It's it's. It's uh, for, for most black people, I would say, I don't want to speak for everybody, but for lots of black people, we don't actually know our family's history beyond our great grandparents. And I actually am so proud that I know the history from my great grandparents and beyond. It makes me really proud and, and it allows me to have a foundation and to continue to grow into the legacy that they left me. Do you believe that the entrepreneur spirit is something that is handed down like a genetic predisposition i what are your thoughts on that i think that it might be i've been watching henry lewis gates like know your roots um i think it's on pbs and it's really interesting because so many people have um maybe someone 
two or three generations back, they have the same exact life path. I think it was like LL Cool J and P. Diddy and I think Deborah Messing, someone, there was a feminist icon whose great great grandmother was also a very a feminist icon. That's um, right. I I think that it some of it does live in you. And I've listened to Deepak Chopra on this one episode of Oprah Super Soul Sunday over and over and over and he talks about pain bodies in your spirit and your soul yes. and things that are passed right. down genetically. And I think that I agree. There there definitely is something being passed down in all of our DNA. Yeah. Can you yeah. recall the very moment when you yourself decided to create your line? Where were you and what was happening at the time, Lauren? For sure. I can definitely, I can tell you both when I decided that I wanted to be a makeup artist. Um, I was sitting on a flight and I was a flight attendant and I was You were a flight not, attendant? I was a flight attendant too. Wow. Um, there you go. Yeah. A, a jet setter, we'll say. And um, I was sitting down, not doing what I was supposed to, but literally sitting down next to a passenger reading a magazine. Um, and I said, look at this, look at this cover, this, this woman. And I'm like talking, I guess out loud to myself. And I, I said, you know, this lady's beautiful, but I really think that this makeup would be way better if it looked like this. And the passenger who was next to me was like, who is this lunatic makeup artist criticizing <laughs> this A-list Oscar winning celebrity makeup? Like, what are you talking about? And I thought you had okay, opinions. You had, you had, you, you were paying attention. You were looking at the details and that is the sign of, you know, that's many artists, right? We're yeah. looking at the things that maybe other people don't. So, so, yep. So I, at that moment, I was like, I want to be a makeup artist. But after all of my years as a makeup artist, I also realized that if I'm not there, then I'm not earning any money. So my earning potential was very uh, restricted because I had to be on site. You know, I thought if I broke my arm or if I fell down in the snow and hurt my leg and I couldn't go to work, then I wasn't making any money. And so I thought I need to do something else. And I looked at the beauty industry and, and I knew that the, the, the landscape was very saturated. Um, there's beautiful makeup products that are out there. Um, but I felt like what would be my point of difference? So I happened to be on a flight. I was jet setting for fun this time. And I had this package of makeup wipes and my makeup wipes completely dried out. And I thought, oh, this is it. This is the moment I have figured it out. I want to create. That does happen. They do dry out. Just yes, they note. dry out. Yeah, side I wanted note to create. On the makeup wipes, if anybody else, I turned the comments off so that we could have a, uh... but if anyone, yeah, I mean, the, the one thing to say is that makeup wipes do dry out. That's yeah, they do. They totally do. Um, so, so yeah, I, I had this like moment while I was sitting at this window seat crossing the equator. It was really hot and sticky and my wipes dried out. And I thought, I got to create, I got to, I got to get something. I can't disturb these people that are sleeping next to me. And I thought, this is what I'm going to do. So I wrote in my journal. And when I got home, I literally went to work. I was jet lagged. I was wide awake all night. And I just went to Google University and found out how to get like the whole process done. So wow. in a matter of, of recovering from jet lag, I was I was communicating with manufacturers and looking at uh, formulas and, and finding chemists and looking at the, um, you know, the solution or the problem that I was solving, which was reducing um, the drying out factor. And then I realized that I just wasted all my money. And what I also realized was that this is creating a lot of actual physical waste. And I learned that 30% of makeup remover wipes are dried out before consumption. Wow. And that goes into landfills. So I created the single uh, use that is, that is something that I, I feel like I'm pretty, I, I'm up on a lot of this sort of information. And that is yeah. something I had never heard before. That it is, is insane. It's a lot of waste. So Lauren Napier Beauty Products, we're all, um, they're individually packaged, which maybe seems a little counterproductive or counterintuitive because everything's got its own package, but right. it's more, a, more of an You would think that it would be more waste, but it's actually not. But it's actually reducing explain, waste. Explain how it isn't. It's reducing waste because all of the packaging is more on demand. So the wipes right. don't dry out. So you can take one or three there i always have them because i'm always using them Perfect. but uh, you take, yeah like, let's do a show and tell you yep. have three 
might as well do this right now. Let's talk about the, do you have the three, the three um, types of I don't have the three formulas at my desk right now. Well, why don't you explain what they are? There's three formulas of your wife's, which is great. Three formulas. Okay, so we've got Cleanse, which is the original. Um, it's got aloe, cucumber, chamomile. It's great for your, it's uh, great for your sensitive to normal, even a little dry. Uh, it's also got an oat kernel extract and that is going to help keep moisture in your skin. Then we've got Flaunt, which is the second formula that launched. It is more of a dryness, anti-aging, all-purpose, ideal for summer, replenishing, rejuvenating. It's got noni fruit, vitamin K. It helps fight against like UV, UV, UVB rays. Um, and what else? Star fruit. That's that's the it's, subscription I'm signing up for. Yeah, I mean, it's what you need for your skin, especially while we're all sitting in front of the, these digital uh, lights. So it's protecting from UVB rays and the noni fruit extract, the lycopene, the selenium is restorative. And so it's helping to restore and repair your skin while it's cleaning your makeup. And then the third formula is La Rose, which is a rose water infused wipe. And it's more for your acne and um, skin congestion. So your acne and like, uh, congestion prone skin I would say it is it's, yeah, it's okay. acne and oily is what I mean to say uh, rose water is ideal for reducing the uh, balancing your oil and it's also ideal for reducing redness so it again it's one of the everyone there's a category for each one so it's hard for me to say like which one no, is it's the perfect. best that's perfect but, I have a question for you though Laura and I want yeah. you to answer this because <clears throat> Being an editor and, you know, being in this business for a while, questions like this tend to fall in my lap, and I hear about this a lot. And so I'm very curious to ask you, what do you say to people in the industry or even people outside of the industry that prefer cleansing the face traditionally to makeup wipes? I think that there are people that have a lot to say about, like, whether a makeup wipe does its job. What do you have to say to that? Well, what I say is, like, you don't want to – I'm going to be honest. You don't want to use a makeup wipe every single day. Just, like yeah. – you right. don't want to use Listerine every day and not brush your teeth. Right. You, it's part of your skincare Very good routine. analogy. Yeah. I mean, it's like you use it when the time calls for it. That's why they're individually packaged. You can take it. You're at the gym. You're on the train. You're leaving your boyfriend's house. You're staying at your boyfriend's house. You're in between work. You're crying on the subway. Whatever it is. <laughs> um, you know, and you've got them, and you're using them to refresh and to cleanse. These actually are just designed to give more benefit to your skin than the average makeup wipe. I mean, I use them, um, and and um, I want to always make sure that they're designed for convenience. Wipes are a convenience product. And so if we're going to use wipes, then let's make sure that they offer the most benefits to your skin and your skin and your complexion. So I don't. I'm totally transparent. I don't think you should be using makeup wipes every single day. No, you need but to, they're you need to effectively cleanse your skin every day. And I love the idea of, you know, having one or two in your makeup bag, having one or two in your desk at work or at your home desk is, you know, I love the idea of just, you know, you're right. It, it, it may seem counterintuitive to package everything individually, but it's actually, actually the smartest thing yeah. ever, right? I mean, this bag, um, my 50 count is the one that I keep sitting around. But um, that can last you for months. Yeah. Uh, and, right. and you don't have to worry because you've got them stashed all over the place. Um, right. It's like little treats when you find them. I get DMs all the time like, I knew I had one in my suitcase. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Can you, um, can you recount the steps that it took you for you to build your brand like for example for me and story and rain it was like number one spend ample time developing the macro idea for the brand and then the micro ideas around it step two like brand the business find the look and feel like step three was probably like gather information about building a magazine and an e-commerce site hybrid step four build it tear it down rebuild it again until you get it right and so on what about yeah. you? Like, can you recount those steps? Because, you know, your story is really interesting. You just sort of, you know, you really, you, you, you're a true entrepreneur in that you, you had a feeling, you felt that there was something out there that wasn't being, um, a, you know, a product that wasn't out there and that you wanted to help bring to market and you just went for it. So 
do you remember the steps in sort of the process in the beginning of the brand? Yeah, I do. Because one of the first things that I did was market research. Like what is out there? What are really great products that I like? And what are products that I just don't like? And luckily, I was a makeup artist. And so I was working with multiple skin conditions. So it wasn't just me or my mom or my sister or my BFF. It was actually... I was working with men. I was working with uh, people who had different hair textures, you know, curly hair, beards, no beards, smooth skin, five o'clock shadow. That was the guys. And then I was working with like the, the, the cast of Saturday Night Live, a very diverse group of people. So amongst my own friend group that I would consider also to be very diverse, I had the opportunity to test out products and formulas on different people. So I tested what existed on the market for a little while. And then I started to cultivate what I liked about them, what I thought, what I thought was good and what I thought just didn't work and make sure that like, if it doesn't work, I don't want it. Whether that's the fabric, the formula, any of that. And then I went to my chemist and I said, like, I gave a very clear and vivid description of what I wanted. Um, but before that, I actually went, like I said, I went on Google View and I found my, I found my chemist. I found, I researched formulas. I found what, what ingredients were like toxic, non-toxic, which ones are like, um, are derivatives and are man-made or, or uh, man-made, but like derivatives of, let's say a coconut, because that's what our formula is made out. It's a coconut derivative. So it's not actual coconut, but it is you know we've got ingredients that are pure botanicals and then we've got some that are you know manufactured and so you spent some time it's fair to say that you spent some time educating yourself on ingredients yeah deciding what to use right there was Absolutely. a time that you just sort of and you, you and it, you're right but there's a lot that we can access now and without having to do you know, it's a lot of it is all sort of in front of it. So it, it sounds like that's what you did with your line. You just sort of got gathered as much information that you can as possible. Yeah. How do you, how, how, and then how do you go about sourcing your ingredients? Like, how do you find your partners in terms of ingredients? Well, you know, I've been working with different, um, I, I work with the chemist and the chemist helped me to source a lot of the ingredients. And then my contemporaries within the industry also help me. Um, we share contacts, we share information, we're supporting each other, we're helping each other find different, different um, ingredients and quality ingredients. And we also want to make sure that I, what I'm doing is, is um, it's ethical. And we're looking to make sure that we're sourcing ingredients ethically. I mean, that's the most important part. 100%. Especially as I start to develop new products. And when I say ethically sourced, I don't just mean animal cruelty, not, you know, not testing on animals. I want to make sure that if this ingredient comes from somewhere in Africa or Asia, the people who are, who are managing this land and these ingredients are also being treated ethically and fairly and being compensated um, to a higher standard. Which are your favorite ingredients to work with? I mean, you know, the main ingredient in the wipes is water. And I think that that's such an important ingredient. Water is the, you know, life source of everything. And it's clean and, and you don't ever feel bad about using it unless you're wasting it. But um, that's a great ingredient. I mean, it's, it is, like I said, it's the life source. Um. I saw that one of your, and you just mentioned it a second ago, that one of your wipes contains lycopene, mm -hmm. which to me is like a totally standout ingredient, in my opinion. Describe what lycopene is and does for people that may not know, because it's a so, pretty powerful ingredient. Oh my gosh. I mean, watch my brain like all of a sudden not work, but it has, well, like I feel like I need to look it up. I feel like I'm a little bit on the spot. What is lycopene? Lycopene is, and it's an ingredient that's, restoring your cell turnover it's helping improve the buoyancy of of what your what your skin cells are able to um, absorb it is i mean how do i describe it um it's funny because nobody ever asked me about lycopene but it's one it's a um such an important ingredient in just cleansing and nourishing the skin it is it really is um, 
Your products are sold, Lauren, your products are sold in a lot of great places. Where they are. are. They, they really are. And where are they sold currently, number one? Um, you know, given everything that's going on right now, where are they being sold currently? And how did you make those connections to... Um, do you want to talk about where you where you've been sold in the past and where yeah, you're sold now? Absolutely. So right now, uh, internationally, it's uh, Lauren Aether Beauty is available on netaporter.com. Um, and then one of our larger, more fun retailers is Revolve. We're also in Harvey Nichols in the Middle East, Mecca, Australia. Um, and then throughout the U.S., you can shop Lauren Napier Beauty at laurennapier.com. So... My question to you is, how did you make those connections? Did you did, did it involve a lot of cold calling? Did it, it, it involve you know people that you knew and that you work with? Um, how it, how hard is it to obtain those kinds of retailers? That I mean, so it's ideal? not it's not easy. But I am a person who has experienced like a ton of rejection. So when some when a retailer says no, it just sort of makes me laugh. I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'll give it a couple months and then I'll circle back. So I was very um, consistent. I'm not going to say aggressive because I don't. I don't think I'm an aggressive person. Uh, but I was very consistent in my uh, approach to these retailers. So I had an idea of exactly where I wanted the brand to be, where I wanted it to sit, where I wanted it to be positioned in the retail space. Uh, you know, a lot of people would say, "Oh, it should be at Ricky's," or "Oh, can you get it in Target?" and I loved, loved Ricky's because Ricky's doesn't exist anymore, and I am a huge fan of Target, but I felt like I wanted something that was a bit more elevated for the customer who may be, you know, I'm a New Yorker. At that point, there weren't Targets in the city. <laughs> right, right. So I wanted it to be in a place um, that people did shop or could shop, and at that point, people were shopping a lot, a lot, a lot online. And Lauren, you know, you have there's a lot of attention to detail. We just went over that in, yeah. in, in the product that you put out. There are three types. The ingredients are very important. So yeah. definitely, yeah. Um, how has the company pivoted during the statewide shutdowns? What, what's been your experience lately? For me, I took it kind of slow. Like in the beginning, it was just sort of like, okay, let's figure out exactly what we're doing. What, what is, what is happening um, with everyone? What, what do people want? Do they want makeup wipes if they're not going out? Or do they want makeup wipes because they're so depressed they just can't get out of bed but they want to clean their face? Like, what is it? What's the need? Um, and so I just gave my customers and my following a time, to, a, a moment to breathe. I decided to not be a corporation that's like, let's just put everything on sale. Remember, everyone was everything was on sale, and we were inundated with emails. And I just thought, man, my customers—they probably need to save their money. We don't know how long we're going to be in this. And I was watching the world news, and I just felt a lot of compassion. So I paused, and I just sat there for a few minutes, or a few days, maybe even a few weeks, and just thought, if the orders come in, I'll ship them out. But I'm not going to go crazy trying to push this product on people. That's and right. so. You know, I really felt like that because I felt as a consumer, as a customer, as a person who was just trying to, you know, understand what was going in the world, on in the world, I was really inundated and flooded and overwhelmed. So I did an Instagram poll and I asked everybody what they wanted. Do you want to shop now? Do you want to, what do you want? And so people, they, they, they didn't necessarily want to shop, but what they wanted was to know more about me. So the way that I pivoted was, you know, really engaging more with my with my customers and with my following to find out what they really wanted, what they wanted to see next, what they wanted to know about me. And I think that's what happens when you're a front facing brand. I'm the face, I'm the name, and I, you know, never put the connection together, whoever thought that we'd be in this position. But it was nice to get to know people and it's been lovely for them to get to know me. I mean, I have a whole series of highlights on my Instagram about all of the food that I'm cooking and you know, the other day, yeah. I, I mean, I, people want to know all about your lifestyle and who's behind the brand. They want to know. It's not surprising at all, but I find it very interesting and I find it, I'm, I'm happy about it. You know, you I'm, know happy. I, I'm happy about it too, because also, I mean, like I mentioned before, I'm very 
um, politically conscious and I have very strong values when it comes to the environment and women's rights. And, you know, I'm highly protective of our essential work. <laughs> and then I, I, um, I was very focused on making sure that, that, um, that community, my community understood that and that was reinforced so now they know exactly who and what they're investing in and exactly what um what is important what my values are i was on your site i was on i was on the site the other day and like i hate to say it like you know maybe this is like a little bit of levity in a time that where there's not that much but i thought it was so cute like you had a cut i don't want to call it like a disclaimer but you're like we may not be shipping out like quite that frequently right now. And you had yeah. the, like the little face emoji with the like surgical mask. It was just like, it, when it popped up on my screen, like it made me smile. What's delivery like for you guys these days? Are you, are you still receiving orders? Are you still receiving subscriptions? Receiving it all, receiving everything. Um, and I, anybody who's watching, who's ordered, who's planning on ordered, Thank you so much. First well, I'm order ordering. I'm definitely, uh, you know, I I hadn't realized that you were doing subscription. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I think I, I have another question about this sort of later on, we'll get to it later. We'll, maybe we'll just tackle it now is that, um, you know, it's genius. Like wipes is one of those things that like. That you just always need. You always need. They always run out. I, someone like me and a lot of people out there, I think always want a top quality wipe, something that's going to be good to their skin. That's maybe going to do a little something for their skin. And that an added benefit. Know, I've got my tampon subscription service. My so little tampon, you know, uh, I'm moving towards subscriptions whenever I can. And wipes are just like the perfect thing. So I think, yes, thank you for that. It's um, true. It is, it is though. Um, well, what I was going to say is you were asking about the, the business and how things are working and when we're going back and, and I work, my co-packer and shipper is the foundation for the handicap. So it's an organization that is, um, Lauren, based, that's wonderful. Yeah. It makes me really proud. I, is that, I, is that, a, that, that is not on your website. No, it's on the, it's there. Um, oh, and I, I try to make sure because I didn't see that. I think, well, maybe that I is a lot. That is something to talk about. That's something to be really proud of. It That's is. Been, been, how did you get linked up with them? Well, when I first started, I wasn't big enough to have a wholesale distribution uh, channel through the big warehouses, like the big shipping centers. And um, I worked, I was searching, I was shipping things out of my house. I was sleeping on the, this fraction of my bed. Um, it was it was a wild, wild uh, time. Actually, he'll kill me if I tell the story, but my ex-boyfriend lived, <laughs> he lived two floors above me and my apartment was filled with boxes from the floor to the ceiling, wrapping paper, the whole thing, bubble wrap. And I would sometimes have to go sleep upstairs in his apartment because I had nowhere to sleep because I had boxes everywhere that I was fulfilling. And so um, it was too much for my apartment and then not big enough. It was just that middle ground. And this, this gentleman that I was calling who owned a warehouse said, you got to get in touch with this organization. And I went out for a visit and it was the foundation for the handicap. And um, that's the name of it. And I, um, and I, it, I was just so happy to meet this team of people. They are a completely underserved, underacknowledged, underemployed part of the American workforce. And um, right now, you know, they're a very high risk work group. And so um, they had yes. been closed. So yeah. I've, I've been working with them uh, and making sure that I can go out, collect inventory, manage the shipping and the packing. Now, what's been interesting is that there's no traffic. I can kind of spend my day and my time doing things. So I'm not, it, it sounds like a lot and it is a lot, but I'm, I just take it day by day. And uh, we're, they're reopening in August, but I've been going out to the, to the warehouse facility. Where are they located? Of, they're in New Jersey. I they're in New that. Jersey. Yep. Yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in New York based, they've got to be somewhere like New Jersey. Yeah. Well, that's more reason to 
to support the brand because it keeps everybody brand. working. I mean, that's truly incredible. What an, yeah. you know, and, and the mind of an, of, of, a, of an entrepreneur is to think out of the box in that way and, um, and just push the envelope and mm -hmm. do things mm -hmm. the way that you want to do things that yeah. resonate with you. I think that's incredible. Uh, explain the subscription service so that people know. I think it's genius. Like I said, that people are able to receive cleansing wipes on the regular. How does that work? So it's a subscription service just like any other. You can you can uh, make a decision on which size you want to come in the mail. So you can customize your subscription and you can customize the frequency. So the best I think is every six weeks. I don't try to force you to have like a hundred bags of back order cleansing wipes <laughs> sitting there. Um, I think every six weeks is good depending on the size, depending on how active you are. Um, you know, um, and and they they come right to your door. We pack them up ship it out it's i love right that. to you i love that tip from you yeah. okay so let's speaking of tips from you i want to shift into that right now what do you personally put on or use on your face Ooh. to achieve your look to my i know that your philosophy yeah you said that your philosophy i have it here Ooh. is is sort of what wait hold on it's there's beauty in taking it off but i can give you the backstory on that too. no but i feel like you you're Informal beauty. Your, it, like your, your, your philosophy on beauty is informal beauty. I want to talk more about that. But first of all, I think like, yeah, just tell us about that. What does, what does, what does informal beauty, what does that mean to you? You know, I grew up in a, in a time where women wore like just a ton of makeup. It was the 80s and the 90s. And if it wasn't like Kate Moss waif, it was just excess. And then even later in the 90s when I was... Like, I wasn't working for Mac then, but I think of Mac in the early 2000s. And um, and I think of that monochromatic, like, your eyeshadow and your lips and your nails. Everything was all the same. And everything and, was heavy and everything and was, it was maybe a little heavy. more matte. And, and I, I, I will look back and I think of the moments that I think are the most attractive with women. And they're always where there's a very little makeup. You know, I think of, I think of, um, oh my gosh, like the Warren Huttons and the, the uh, Bianca Jagger and who else? Like I'm thinking Vanessa Williams on a magazine cover, or Diana Ross on the cover right. of her magazine of her album where she's just in a t-shirt and jeans and she looks more beautiful than ever. And it's just because you are not distracted by the actual, um, you're not distracted by the makeup or what the person is wearing, but you see them for who they are. And yeah. that is something that was, it's always been important uh, to me. That's been part of my beauty aesthetic. And I think that's really what resonated with all of my customers and all of my clients and anybody who I worked with was that while I was enhancing their appearance, I wasn't taking away from them as an individual. Yeah. Um, and so that informal enhanced but very subtle beauty is what speaks to me and and that's just been the philosophy for Lauren if your beauty and anything that I've that I've done so what do you personally put on or use on your face to achieve that look for Let's makeup are we talking makeup we're talking skin care we're talking like the hybrid the, the the you know the the home run hybrid of skin care and makeup please share with us what you do to achieve the, you know, to, to what it's your aesthetic. So what does that mean? What, what so, does it mean in know, terms of products, skincare, makeup? With skincare, there's, I wear a moisturizer and a serum all the time at night. And, and the that daytime. is. Okay. So I'm rotating lots of different products. Yeah. I, I think a lot of beauty professionals rotate. I, I do. Know I rotate a lot of people that are beauty junkies. That, beauty you know, junkies. Rotate. Um, but what are you, what's your rotation right now? Love a rich serum. So I'm using, um, I'm using Beneath Your Mask. I'm using Leland Francis. I'm using, um, I'm using Vinter's Daughter. Beautiful, oh. beautiful product. I have um, not bought my Vintner's Daughter in so long. You actually just reminded me of that. Oh, it's so like, good. Like, I'm not, I need to buy some more. Write it, write it down. The, the, um, she's also got an essence that sort of smells like kombucha. It's, I've it, heard it, about the essence. I've not tried the, it. And it just, it makes you feel like, oh, I'm actually really doing something restorative to my skin. So okay. I love, I love that. Um, Leland Francis is the most incredible serum. Beneath your mask, a beautiful 
hair and face serum. So you use it in your hands and you can just kind of like rub it in your hair, which is great. Um, I'm using Mario Badescu. I love high, low um, skincare. So I might buy something that's more extravagant and expensive, but then I might buy something else. So I use Mario Badescu Caviar Night Cream religiously. I'm using a Joanna Vargas. Uh, under I love, eye we mask. love Joanna Vargas. At love Story Joanna Week. Vargas, and we love a high low moment. So, L like, that's... what's the point? You don't have to go bananas. Things do well, work. You just no, but if you're smart and you're informed, yeah, you know what to spend on and you know what to save on. So, I'm using a lip mask that I'm absolutely in love with, and that is called Henne H E N N E. Beautiful lip mask, and they have a treatment, so a scrub, and it just dissolves so nicely and smooth. Um, that's what I'm using for skincare. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, so what about in terms of makeup? Are you doing like mascara and a lip gloss? Absolutely. I mean, I cheek, have a. Or what do you, I do a full. I do a whole. Routine. I know. I love this. I, everyone wants to know what's happening on the face. Am it I, takes. It takes seconds, right? To okay. do my makeup, like right, which is what to sort do. of what I wanted to talk to you about as well is that you've said yourself that you like to put on and you like to take off makeup very quickly, and I do too. Like I've never been somebody who has a long routine. I I'm a I wear makeup religiously, and I'm a you know I, I'm a fan of beauty. But yeah. my routine has never been laborious or long. So there's no reason for that. that. First, what 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 makeup products do you use? Okay, so right now I'm wearing NARS. I think it's a sheer glow foundation, um, which I start with a dampened beauty blender sponge, beauty blender forever, and I just work the foundation right into my skin. I do not drag it over my face, but I stipple it. And I show this in my videos. I stipple my foundation on. So one, I'm not dragging or pulling or just like stressing my skin out. That's a technique that everybody might want to jump on. <laughs> well, I was going to say yes, because that's that's one thing that I, you know, I like to keep things short and simple and sweet. And I think that often for me means using a couple of brushes, but mostly using my fingers. And I think maybe using a sponge is probably a better just make sure you wash your sponge because if you don't wash it you're putting bacteria back in your skin and that's, that's not good but so yeah. i just stipple it on it goes on very smooth um i mean if this can happen if, if you have textured skin or you know you're suffering from like acne or blemishes or acne scarring um first of all hyper skin care get hyper amazing for reducing um uh, hyper pigmentation and that's across the board for all complexions beautiful product. I was using it on um, one of my uterine fibroid cyst scars and it's going away. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's on the body and the face. And we're going to link, we're going to set up all these products so that people. Oh yeah, you, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, shop so, your faves. Yeah. Shop my faves. So it's NAR Sheer Glow um, and then the Beauty Blender Sponge on my cheek is MAC Improper Copper. Use it. Love it. I love a cream color base. It just makes your Me skin too. look incredibly luminous. Um, it highlights your cheekbones without having to like highlight and contour. Like you can see that it's a it's a yeah it's a um, cream base. And I wish that brands would have more of those. Fenty actually just launched a collection of cream color, and I have it, and I'm into it. Um, and then, hey, so Lauren, do you think these work for most skin types? Maybe not dark, 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 but maybe most. No, I think it works for everybody. You've just got to find. You've got to find the um, the color oh, that goes. So for Fenty or um, what was the other brand that you? Mentioned? The other one was Mac, but I don't know if they. I, I think they still make it. I hope they do. But Fenty so has just find the, that's that's sort of the texture and the product that you love. But find the color that. Yep a cream and it might seem counterintuitive if you're like a darker darker skin complexion or if you're a really really light skin complexion you might want to um it just depends on on how your skin is going to absorb the color how much moisturizer you have and that's how the color will reflect because if your skin is dry and you use a cream base your skin is going to absorb that cream and it's going to um, it's going to drag and stick to that dryness. So I think that's a great tip that I think that a lot of people don't really think about. If your skin is dry and you're using these sort of oil-based or cream-based products, it's not going to have the same effect as it, you know, when your skin is dewy. So if you're buying something for dewy skin, don't necessarily expect it to be dewy if your skin is parched and needs that hydration. 
And I would say the same thing if you're exceptionally oily, right? If you and have a really, really oily skin, you might want to use a different serum. That's you right. can you can get the same effect. You've just got to be measured in what you're using and applying on your skin. Um, so I'm using cream color base, but then I also use a blush over it just to set it. So I wish I had my brushes here because but there's IGTV videos. You guys watch them. I do. I do all my makeup. But yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna. We're gonna set this up as a video. So cool. For sure. Cool deal. So I stipple it on my skin, and then I take the brush and just sweep really gently. Not a lot. A little bit always goes a long way. Um, and then the next thing I do is I'm Anastasia Brow, uh, and then I use Milk Mascara. Sometimes Milk. Most of the time, Armani um, Eyes to Kill. I've heard Armani is fantastic mascara. It's a beautiful mascara. One thing I want to remind people of, and I, I mentioned this in an IGTV video too, is that um, your mascara is like your hair. So you want to find a good formula for your hair. Different mascaras have different formulas. So you right. want, if you have straight hair, maybe find Great something tip as that well. has, yeah, that has a lighter uh, formula. And if you have thicker curly hair, maybe find something that's a thicker formula. Um, Lauren, what's next for the brand? Ooh, I mean, it's, it's do you have, what's next? Do you have, goal, do you have goals in mind? Do you have um, goals as an artist and an entrepreneur? Goals as an entrepreneur, yes. I'm working on right now, you know, there's so many things going on with, with people. The culture is very shifting. I'm working on an initiative called um, Consider Something Better. And it is to encourage brands to support women of color black women specifically we are underfunded uh and it's hard for us to grow and scale brands so as much as i want to grow and scale my brand it's very difficult when the revenue i'm receiving i'm putting right back into my business so we have to fund black women owned businesses that's my personal initiative and goal as okay as let's talk about that because that was another question of mine how do you yeah. think the how do you think the journalists the media as well as people at large should and can help support and strengthen opportunities for black women in business and to support black creatives, generally speaking. I think what you do you got, think people can do? You want to make space. You want to listen to what they have to say. You want to consider their opinions are valid and they're coming from a place of personal experience and knowledge. And just because it doesn't happen to you or directly impact you doesn't mean that the story is not valid to a huge swath of other people. Um, Listening and, and understanding that perspective and how valuable it is, is only going to make things easier and make for a better, healthier communication amongst everyone. You know, everyone's story needs to be told. Um, I hope I don't lose you guys because I know we have like an hour, right, on IGTV. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up, but this is great. And I, I would say, you know, what, what advice is top of mind when it comes to advising other women who wish to become entrepreneurs and business owners like you? Uh, the first thing I can say is be passionate and be prepared and be ready for how difficult it is going to be. Running a business is challenging uh, on all levels. You have to dig really, really deep, especially if you're like an underfunded person and you've got to be creative and you've got to be as stressed out as you get. You have to be an internal and internal optimist because it's, a, it's not an easy road. To, and it's, it's not an easy space to navigate. And it's not like you're a doctor and you go to medical school and then, you know, you graduate. It's like, do people like your product and have you gotten the message out? And that's, that's the difference.